Let's turn again to Isaiah 53. I believe all of you have heard the sermons the last three weeks. If you have not, by chance you have missed it, go back and listen to it and enrich yourself with the precious word of God. This is a series from Isaiah 53. And I believe all of you are also attending Wednesday evenings. It's a series that it's a, it was a sub-series from on biblical thinking the last eight weeks from Hebrews 12. I hope you've not missed anything. If you missed, go, pa- go back and listen to it and, and enrich. This is God's teaching for us. Enrich yourself with God's word. And if you are listening to it, I'm sure you're blessed. And thank God for every word that you receive. Amen. We may not be able to meet physically even as of now. We, as we will pray. We'll see when God wants us to come together and we will surely get together. There is that God will help us with that. But until then, thank God for this medium and thank God for the grace that we can receive God's word week after week. Amen. Amen. Isaiah 53. Isaiah chapter 53. And as you listen, always remember... There is grace in the word that you receive and God gives a word There is grace and his anointing flows. And as you just submit yourself and even just present yourself in this place just to receive his anointing moves over you. And there are things that we don't see in the natural. I may see myself just speaking to you, but I know in the supernatural, the anointing of God is flowing and the power of God is flowing and he and the, and, and God will do great things for you. For you, you may just be sitting in front of a screen, but as you submit your heart to God with dedication and sincerity, the same anointing will move over your life and in areas that you yourself don't see or know or understand, the precious and powerful anointing of God is moving and it will set you free, it will give you freedom, liberty. Sometimes we just don't see it, but the anointing in the supernatural realm, God is doing things for you. Amen. So we should always value the spiritual more than the natural. Some of us will feel it's just a screen. I'm just listening on TV or on the phone. It is not uh, as powerful. No, it is the anointing. Just receive from the anointing of God. Amen. Say, I receive from God's presence. Say, I receive from God's anointing. It's your spirit that is tuned to God, not just your eyes that is tuned to a screen, but your spirit tuned to God that makes a difference. And this morning, may the anointing of God fill you with joy, with peace, with freedom, healing, liberty, blessing, and all that you need to live a whole life and a life for the glory of God. May the anointing of God fill you with all of that this morning in Jesus name. Amen. <clears throat> Isaiah 53 verse 1 and 2 Who has believed our report and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of dry ground He has no form or comeliness, and when we see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. This this chapter is about Jesus. The report that the word of God is speaking is, is a salvation that comes through Jesus. And as we take it in a general way, who has believed the report of God's word? Say once more, I believe God's word. Say, I believe Jesus. We believe the report of God more than the report of man. Amen. And the arm of the Lord is Jesus specifically in this and in a general way, the blessing of the hand of God that moves over all of us. For he shall grow up before him. (coughs) He shall grow up. Jesus grew up before God. What Adam lost when he walked away, he walked away from God's presence, but Jesus grew up in the presence of God. And last week we looked at he grew. How did he grow? He grew up as a tender plant. Amen. Jesus was humble, obedient, always allowed. As Jesus said, I am the wine. 
my father is a wine dresser he was a gentle tender wine before god which god could uh, could, uh, could direct him lead him put him dre- and dress him or correct him the way he wanted and build him amen god could do what he wanted with jesus amen jesus never sinned god did not have to correct that's not the meaning but god he was submissive he looked at all those verses from the gospel of john and philippians where jesus was completely yielded so tender to the will of the father once more before we continue just say father let my heart be tender before you let my heart be tender to your word and let me receive your word and let me grow before you as a tender plant like jesus amen amen adam lost his tenderness after some time he listened to the voice of the enemy through his wife and he stopped listening to the voice of god that's when when sin entered but jesus restored that now today look at let's look at the next part of that verse <coughs> he grew he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of dry ground amen he grew jesus grew up before god as a root out of dry ground in a dry place it is not possible in a dry land nothing grows but jesus the bible says like a root in dry ground he grew up before god amen not just as a tender plant in submission but where did jesus come forth or where did jesus grow like a root out of dry ground it's impossible or very extremely difficult for something to grow in dry ground that's the understanding there but still in that dry ground jesus grew up because he was in the presence of god he grew like a root in dry ground amen he grew like a root in dry ground now what is the meaning there until jesus came for 4000 years from the time of adam until then initially the earth was formless and void genesis chapter 1 verse 1 there was nothing but god spoke his word and created everything beautiful and the word of god says he saw that it was good but when god created adam and adam sinned that beauty was lost we will look at all those verses in the in genesis but before that let me just explain a little adam lost that beauty and from and sin entered the world and from the time of adam until jesus came everything was dry there was death there was disease there was destruction there was no hope the situation into which jesus christ the son of god was born in flesh was a situation of a dry ground no rains it was dry dead and there was no life everything was dead on this planet because though there was physical life spiritually everything was dead there was darkness man did not know how to get back to god the law was given that the 10 commandments and all the other laws man tried to keep it and keep it and keep it and keep it but he failed and failed and failed and there was guilt more and more guilt and so everything was dry and empty and dark till jesus came and so when he came into this earth the situation of the earth or this planet of or mankind was that man was dry and dead and hopeless and dark It's in that dryness that Jesus grew up. Amen. Hallelujah. Just like in a dry ground there is no possibility of anything else growing, in that when a root comes it's strange. Just like that in this hopeless world there was no hope, but that in that dryness Jesus came up. Amen. Jesus grew and he came even in that situation because he is not someone who just produces life 
but Jesus is life. Amen. John chapter 1 says, in him was life. In Jesus is life. And he, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He himself is life. So, no matter how dry the ground, he could come through that before the presence of the Father. Amen. Say hallelujah. No matter how dead, how hopeless, how destroyed, how everything was dull and dark, even through that, he could come because he is the light of the world and he is the life of the world. And so he could come through even that hopeless situation. Amen. Today in your life, if there is darkness, death, disease, hopelessness, dullness, dryness, whatever is there, you need to remember Jesus is the root in your life who will come through that situation for the glory of God. Amen. Say hallelujah. No matter how dry, how dull, hopeless and dark your life is and how down and out your life is, if you just allow yourself to be in the presence of God and allow Jesus to, to, to rule and reign in your life, in that dryness, deadness, disease, disease and hopelessness Jesus will come as a root and as a as a shoot and as a tender plant as life in your darkness and death amen say hallelujah say I receive Jesus say I receive the work of Jesus in my life in that dry ground Jesus came up amen where no other prophet could give complete hope and life no other philosopher no other scientist no other great man no other the ruler could give life to man, life to humankind. No so-called religion could give life to man in the dry, dead place Jesus came up amen say hallelujah lift your hands and thank Jesus and say thank you Lord because you are my root and you are my life amen and give a clap of praise for Jesus wherever you are amen hallelujah in that remember that just see that as a picture in in that dry dark world Jesus came up just like that he's able to work for us amen now let's look at Genesis so that we understand this better. Genesis. When you understand this, it's so beautiful what Jesus did. And when you understand what Jesus did and how, what, how he came, then and when you apply this and see this as a whole picture through Genesis and Isaiah, and apply it in your life, you will see how Jesus can do great things for you, not just on this earth, more than anything for eternal life. Amen. Hallelujah. So this is our fourth teaching in revealing Jesus. Revealing Jesus. This is the title is revealing Jesus. That's what we are understanding in these weeks. Revealing Jesus. Amen. Genesis Chapter 3. Hallelujah. Genesis 3, verse 17 and 18. What Adam lost. I told you last week that when we look at Isaiah 53, step by step, word by word, we see Jesus in his life on earth reversed everything that Adam lost. What God gave Adam, Adam lost, but Jesus took it back again. Amen. Now look at what happened in Genesis 3, verse 17 and 18. Then to Adam, God said, Because you have heeded the voice of your wife, we spoke on that last week, he was no longer tender to God, but his tenderness was to somebody else. <coughs> And have eaten from the tree of which I commanded you, saying, You shall not eat of it. So what did God say? Cursed is the ground for your sake. Cursed is the ground. The ground was cursed. See, that's the symbolism in Isaiah 53. The ground symbolizing the earth and the literal ground and the world itself. The ground was cursed. But in that dry ground, Jesus grew up as a root. Amen. In that cursed place, Jesus came out, came up as a blessing. Amen. Hallelujah. The ground was cursed. The earth was cursed. So because of Adam's sin, cursed is the ground for your sake. 
in toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life and what will grow on the earth both thorns and thistles it shall bring forth what is this ground bringing forth now only thorns and thistles and pain and you shall eat the herb of the field amen the ground is cursed this ground can only produce thorns and thistles it's a cursed ground now it is this that jesus reversed now jesus in this cursed place he came up as a blessing amen say hallelujah give a clap of praise for jesus do you understand this do you get this do you, are you i hope you're getting hold of this in your spirit that when it was cursed in that no word i told you i'm telling you the last 3 4 weeks no word in the bible is accidental or just for poetic importance it is something very every word is valuable the ground was cursed there was nothing beneficial that was coming forth but jesus in that dry place he came up into this cursed land jesus in that cursed place jesus came up as a blessing and look at this what happened at that time not just was it cursed he also god also said in toil you shall eat of it in toil you shall eat of it why what was the blessing adam and eve enjoyed till then look at chapter 2 verse 16 genesis 2 verse 16 what was the first blessing one of the blessings god gave adam and eve the lord said in verse 16 the lord commanded the man saying of every tree of the garden you may freely eat you see the blessing that was there was that they did not have to work to eat but god gave them a mighty blessing where god said i have already put the trees all you need to do is you can go and eat from every tree whatever you want there's only one tree you will not eat from you can freely eat from any tree what a blessing Amen what a blessing they had the permission and the freedom they did not have to work they could just walk with god every day they did not have to work they could just enjoy the fruit from any tree in the garden but now god says because they were cursed because they disobeyed what became their state now they cannot eat freely from any tree now god says in toil you shall eat you will work hard you have to work hard now for your life itself are you understanding the difference there was a blessing now it's turned into a place where you have to really work hard to get your food then the word says both thorns and thistles shall bring forth can shall come forth now look at chapter 1 chapter 1 verse 11 So God is saying you have to work and bring forth you have to work and bring forth you bring forth the herbs and the plants what was the what was the state first what was God's blessing verse 11 of Genesis 1 then God said let the earth bring forth grass the herb that yields seed and the fruit tree that yields fruit according to its kind who seed is itself on the earth and it was so when god blessed first god said let the earth the earth that was dry dark we i spoke on this in the in the month of jan we uh, I've, i've spoken on this verse how in the dry dark place that the earth was in when when the holy spirit moved and god spoke from that dry earth the grass came forth the herb came forth when god spoke it was not because adam and eve tilled the land and did work and did something that the grass and the and the herbs came up god spoke his word and the blessing came amen we always have to look for that kind of a blessing in our lives we should all work hard we as long as we live on this planet we have to work 
But it's not the work itself that brings forth fruit. Some of us, we, we work and work and work and we don't see the result. What we need if we want to see a fruit in our lives is the blessing of the word of God. You look for the, the word that comes to you that brings a blessing. You look for God to speak into your life. You speak as a child of God. Speak a word into your life for blessing in the name of Jesus and that blessing is what brings the fruit amen now this was what god did he spoke and grass and herbs came up but genesis 3 18 god says what will come up now from the ground by itself is thorns and thistles grass and herbs were coming but now what will come is thorns and thistles he boom in the eager baro the shapisal patirwa boom in the eager baro the mullo ಮುಳ್ಳಿರುವ ಗಿಡಗಳು ಬರೋದು ಈ ಭೂಮಿಯಿಂದ ಈಗ ಮೊದಲು ದೇವರ ಆಶೀರ್ವಾದ ಇದ್ದಾಗ ಹುಲ್ಲು ಬಂತು ಗಿಡ ಗಿಡ ಬಂತು ಮರ ಬಂತು ದೇವರ ವಾಕ್ಯದಿಂದ ದೇವರ ಆಶೀರ್ವಾದದಿಂದ ಆದರೆ ಈಗ ಶಪಿಸಲ್ಪಟ್ಟಿರುವ ಭೂಮಿಯಿಂದ ಬರಲು ಸಾಧ್ಯವಾಗುವುದು ಬರೀ ಮುಳ್ಳಿರುವ ಕಾರ್ಯಗಳು ಏ ಮ್ಯಾನ್ ಸೊ ದಟ್ಸ್ ಹೌ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಬಿಕಮ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಟರ್ನ್ ವೆನ್ ಜೀಸಸ್ ಇಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ದೇ ಓ ವೆನ್ ವಿ ಅರಾಚ್ ಆರ್ ಸೆಲ್ಸ್ ಟು ದ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ವಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಪಾಸಿಬಲ್ ಇಸ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಥಾನ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಥಿಸಲ್ಸ್ and then god said and you shall eat of the herb of the field when you work hard the herbs will come from that ground you remove the thistles you work hard you work very hard remove the thorns thistles till the land and then some blessing some fruit will come for you to live are you listening get the picture of this what is what's happening here god is saying his blessing is removed and there's a curse now the curse is you work and work and work and produce fruit and that's why in our nature it is to work and work and work and try to work hard to get results not that we should we should all work hard we read the book of proverbs all through the bible we know we should work hard the Pro- book of proverbs says be like the ant plan work hard but just hard work doesn't produce fruit what we need is the blessing of god many of the blessings that even hard work produces may evaporate in a moment because what we need is the blessing of god and that's why because we have the nature of working hard that's why we also work for our salvation this is showing all of that we are working man worked for his salvation every religion teaches us to work for salvation be good do good be good do good be good do good be good do good then you can go to heaven when your goodness outweighs your badness then heaven you can hope to enter into heaven work 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 but that is not how it was in the beginning and now it is no longer that now jesus has come you are not working for your salvation but you are receiving salvation as a free gift amen. through jesus amen. amen just like adam and eve received all the plants in the garden as a free gift god told in genesis 2:16 you shall freely eat of any tree just like that when we are in christ jesus we are in that position we can freely eat of salvation that's why romans 3:23 says the wages of sin is dead but the free gift of god free gift of god free gift of god is eternal life through jesus christ not something that you work and work and work and do rituals and traditions and practices and you keep laws and try to get salvation no it's a free gift salvation is a free gift if any of you is still trying to impress god or try to get salvation through your rituals or traditions or religion or your hard work and all the things you do you think that's what will will get you salvation stop doing that that is a curse the blessing is when you receive salvation by faith because jesus has come through that dry ground as a root amen say hallelujah it was cursed and man worked 
man worked and God gave the law in the Old Testament to let people know. If you read Romans, you know, God gave the rules for man to realize, no, I can't keep these rules. That's why I need Jesus to set me free. Amen. So God wants us to understand no matter how much you work, what will come, thorns and thistles will come. But when you believe, then you are set free. Amen. So this was the blessing in the beginning. God spoke and the blessing came. Adam lost it. The ground became cursed. Even for food, he had to, he had to sweat and work. But the Bible says in that cursed atmosphere where God had given him freely. Do you realize how many times God has given us things freely? And he says, enjoy your life in the word, in the presence of God. But we want the very thing God says, don't eat it. Don't do it. That's the very thing we go after many times. Today, if we are living like that, with the grace of God, let's come out of it. God has given us so many trees to eat from. And that is the word of God and his grace. He's given us so much freely. Enjoy that. Don't go after things that don't belong to you. Don't go after things that are not in the will of God. Don't go after things that are not according to God's word. Don't even dream about it. Don't even think about it. If it is not God's will, it's not God's plan, then it will destroy you. And so what is first find out the will of God? What has he told you you can eat freely from? Go to those things only. Amen. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Say hallelujah. Say hallelujah. What he has given, eat only from those trees. Eat only from that will of God. Don't eat. Don't try to enjoy from the world. Amen. So in that, while that was the situation and the ground got cursed, the Jesus came up in that dry ground. Amen. As a blessing, as, a, as, a, as, as hope, as salvation. And this is what we need to see. Y'all, some of us think my life is so dry, so empty, so dark, so hopeless. <clears throat> some of us think my life is so cursed. And in a natural way, all of that may be true. But you need to look at the word of God. That even though there was curse and dryness and hopelessness and darkness, Jesus was the answer and Jesus is still the answer. Amen. Say hallelujah. He is the answer. Sometimes we would like to think maybe my ancestors did something and so that's why these curses are in my life. Maybe. But what is your answer? The question is not from where is the problem coming? The question is not what is the problem? That's a good question to ask. What is the problem? Where did this problem start? But the more important question is, so what is the answer? The answer is Jesus. Amen. Let's not try to understand all these. If you understand and God gives you revelation, good. But most of our problem is we keep looking at the problem. Why did this sickness come? Why did this problem come? And we go. It's good to ask ourselves if there is something to set right in our lives, whether it's to do with food, whether it's to do with relationships, it's good to set it right. But the answer in the end is still Jesus Christ. Amen. It is Jesus Christ for your darkness, for your hopelessness, for your sin, for your curse. Every answer is Jesus Christ. Amen. Because he in that curse, he came as a blessing. Amen. If I want to put a subtitle to this, while the main title is revealing Jesus, the title I would give this message is the blessing in place of a curse where your curse is where Adam because of Adam's sin, the ground was cursed in that dry place. Jesus came up. Amen. In your place of curse and lack of fruit and lack of blessing and lack of freedom in that place. Jesus is coming up as your answer through the cross and through the blood 
Amen. Hallelujah. In that place of defeat and destruction and disease, Jesus is coming up as your answer. Amen. Hallelujah. That's why Jesus came. He did not come to just simply die on a cross. He came because he is the answer to your life. He is the answer for your eternal life. Amen. Now, because Jesus did that. Now, let's first look at two verses that we have taken already this year. First, Isaiah 40, uh, Isaiah 44. <coughs> say, Jesus is my blessing. Jesus. And I want to say it very clearly. It doesn't matter what ancestral curse what curse is upon your life or family or body you need to just bow down before Jesus and declare Jesus you are my blessing you are my blessing amen go ahead and say that out loudly say Jesus you are my blessing Jesus you are my blessing even even listen there are sicknesses in our bodies and the doctors say or uh, science says or medical science says it is hereditary what is that hereditary disease that comes from one generation to another generation to another generation? What is that? That is nothing but a curse because it never belonged to you. It is coming down. The doctors have given it a nice word, hereditary. I'm not saying they are wrong, but there's a natural, in the natural realm, there's a word, hereditary, because your father had, your grandfather had, it will come. They will say that. But if you use it in biblical language, if you call it, you have to call it a curse has come. And when we start calling it a curse, we will look for freedom in that disease. As long as we relax using the scientific name and say it's just hereditary, we'll just say it's just hereditary, just hereditary. No, it's something that doesn't belong to you because the Bible says Jesus took your sickness upon the cross. It may be in the natural realm hereditary, but Jesus has set you free from that curse. Amen. Hallelujah. Now you are, the Bible says you are born again, not of the will of man. John 1, 11 and 12, not of the will of man, not of flesh and blood, but of the will of God. John 1, 11 and 12. I'm not going there, but you look at it. Now we are born again in a new family. Our father is God. My father is not just my natural father, but I have a new father. My bloodline is not just the blood bloodline of my ancestors, but my bloodline is the blood of Jesus and I'm born again. Are you listening? That's why these sicknesses that come down, you can have freedom from that in the name of of Jesus and by believing in the gospel believe in the report of God and you can have freedom from those curses that have come down you did not want it but it has come there may be other curses in the family because of your ancestors sin whatever it is whatever is hereditary you can be free from it in the name of Jesus amen before we come to Isaiah 44 we'll come there I want you to look at Galatians 3:13. A very important and a powerful verse. Galatians 3 verse 13. <coughs> and verse 14. Galatians 3, 13 and 14. Get the truth of Jesus into your spirit. Get the truth of Jesus into your spirit today. Understand it and you will not live under any curse. You will not live under the power of any sin. Understand this, Adam worked and he, he got everything freely, but because of sin, he had to work and work and work and work and work until Jesus came and reversed that. It's not just a symbol of working hard. It's a symbol that we would work. We would, that's our human mentality to work, to please God, to work for salvation, to work hard, to get blessing and lose focus that it is God's hand that blesses us. Amen. Galatians 3 verse 13 and 14. <coughs> Christ. Who is the Christ? The Christ is the Messiah. The anointed one. Jesus Christ. Has redeemed us. From the curse of the law. Jesus Christ has redeemed us. From the curse of the law. If you read. Deuteronomy 20, there are lots of curses mentioned. 
for disobedience. And so in that sense, we are all cursed because we all disobey. But when we come to Jesus in repentance and when we come to Jesus and receive him and believe him, the Bible says Jesus has redeemed us. He has redeemed us, set us free. We've, we've been redeemed from the curse. Say, have we been redeemed from the curse? From the curse of ancestors, from the curse of sicknesses, from the curse of generations. I have been redeemed from the curse of the law. That's what Jesus did. Isaiah 53, he came as a root out of dry ground where everything was cursed because of Adam's sin and his and his and man's sin. When everything was cursed and dry in that Jesus came as my redemption. Uh, he's my root of redemption, root of salvation, root of hope. He is my everything. He's redeemed me from every curse. So don't try to think, oh, where did that curse from come? Did it come from my father or my aunt or my great grandfather? Whoever it came from, that's your natural lineage. But you, you are a child of God. That's now you are a child of God. That's your spiritual connection. That's your spiritual genealogy. That's your life. Amen. Not earthly genealogy, spiritual genealogy. Amen. Say hallelujah. Say I am a child of God. Say I'm a child of God. You need to see that. You need to see that. We are so natural minded. We only see my father, my father's father, father's father's father. And we know all of that. But we forget that is just natural. This is my spiritual line. My Jesus Christ birthed by the Holy Spirit. I'm born again and I'm a child of God. And when I'm a child of God, I am redeemed from every curse that is under the law. Amen. And so when you give yourself to Jesus, no curse, no matter from which family line it has come, it cannot work upon your life because now you are under Jesus and not under your natural family line. Amen. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Let's continue to read Galatians 3, 13 and 14. <coughs> Christ has redeemed us from the curse. Once more say, Christ has redeemed me from the curse. Having become a curse for us. Amen. Adam was cursed. In order to remove the curse, he came in the dry ground. In that dry ground. And he himself became a curse for me on the cross. Amen. Those who were around him cursed him. All sin of mankind was upon him. So he became a curse. All our curses were upon Jesus. So he became a curse. All our curses, all of humanity's curses, Jesus took upon himself. And he became a curse. Imagine, so if Jesus has become a curse, should you carry any curse anymore? Because some of you are trying to dissect, oh, did this curse come from that direction or this direction or this direction or this is whatever. Your curse may be a result of your sin. Repent and just believe in Jesus. If you don't know which sin, just bow down before Jesus and say, Lord, whatever it is, I am sorry. And Lord, I believe you and you are my cleansing. You are my healing. You are my deliverance. You may not know which sin, but say, God, I'm humbling myself to do your will now. And his blood is enough. Amen. Say hallelujah. His blood is enough. Say his blood is enough. His blood is enough. His blood is enough. His blood is enough. Blood is enough. Amen. Say hallelujah. Say I am free. free. Having become a curse. Curse is everyone who hangs on a tree. Why? Verse 14. Why did he become a curse? That the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus. Amen. Because Jesus died upon the cross. It's not the curse of Adam that will stay upon you. Or the curse of the law that will stay upon you. But the Bible says the blessing of Abraham the blessing of Abraham will now come upon you in Christ Jesus. Amen. Abraham lived such a blessed life. He lived a long life. 
sickness free life he lived a whole life he had cattle and money and he had everything he needed the Abra Abraham is a symbol of blessing for a long time he did not have children but then he had a child even at the age of 100 amen so he was fully blessed and so the word of God says Jesus has redeemed you from the curse of the law now so that the blessing of Abraham might be upon you amen not the curse of Adam not the curse of the Lord not the curse of sin but the blessing of God shall follow you everywhere now in Christ Jesus whatever you are doing some things and you feel it's failing. Now believe in Christ Jesus. Don't depend on your hard work and your plan. Do all of that. Do it because you have to do it. But depend on the blessing of Abraham that comes upon you in Christ Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. The Bible says in, I think it's Genesis 25 verse 1. He was, Abraham was blessed in every way. See, that's a blessing. You want to be blessed in every way. You want to be blessed in every way. That's the blessing that will come upon you in Christ Jesus. That and more. Amen. Say hallelujah. The blessing of God, not the curse of your ancestors, but the blessing of Abraham, the blessing of God. Whatever you touch, let it be blessed in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I have Isaiah 44. Isaiah 44. Quickly. Two verses quickly and we are closing. <coughs> This is the verse for us this year. For I will pour water on him who is thirsty and floods on the dry ground. Amen. Hallelujah. I will pour my spirit on your descendants. Blessing. Now what will continue is not the curse that come, came from your father. To your descendants what will continue is the blessing of God and the blessing of Abraham. And my blessing on your offspring. Amen. So he will send because Jesus came as a blessing in that dry ground and you hunger for him and you believe he will he will send floods upon the dry ground it's not just an ordinary thing it's not a little water there but his his word for us this year that he will pour water on him who is thirsty and he will send floods 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 upon the dry ground things may be dry and dead in your life but he will send floods amen john chapter 4 john chapter 4 Hallelujah. Say, I am blessed in Jesus Christ. I am blessed in Jesus Christ. Genesis, uh, John 4, 13 and 14. This Samaritan woman is in sin. She's living a wrong life, but Jesus is telling her how to open her life out and receive springs of water. Whoever drinks of this water will thirst again. Whoever drinks from this world will thirst again that's why no matter how much we try to be satisfied with anything in this world whether it is entertainment whether it is friends whether it is family whether it is drinks whether it is uh, you know uh, uh, tv or anything even jobs some people find a lot of contentment just working and working in their jobs that's their life but it never satisfies never satisfies whoever drinks of this will thirst again but whoever drinks of the water that i shall give him will never thirst why do you drink because you are dry he's telling that sinful woman at that point sinful he's telling her you are dry there's no hope you've lost everything you're trying to fill some earthly water it won't help you but if you want your dryness to go, drink the water that I give you. But the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. And so we may be thirsty. Our dryness is there. But when we drink of the Holy Spirit that he gives, we will never be dry again. It's because Jesus came in that dry ground as a blessing. Joel 2.28 says, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Why can he pour the spirit out? Because Jesus came in this curse onto this cursed land and he blessed it through the cross. Amen. And so listen carefully. I want you to 
meditate on this word it's it's actually much deeper than i can teach today go back to the book of genesis and read how life was for adam how he lost because of sin and how everything became cursed and look at the fact that you can have everything freely in christ jesus and in this deadness dryness hopelessness jesus has come forth as a root out of dry ground amen and so no matter what you see your life this is this is who jesus is he came this is a situation into which jesus came as a blessing the spiritual reality or what how jesus came but let's apply it into our lives your life may be dry and dead because of your sin or hopelessness or because of just depending on hard work or whatever reason your life may be dry dead destroyed dark dull hopeless dead no life whatever is dry and dead you just allow jesus's blessing to fall to flow on it today amen, amen. and it can come back to life in jesus name if i ask you is jesus the root of your life if jesus is the root in your life on which you're building your life then no matter how dry the ground the blessing will come the floods of the holy spirit will come the blessing of god will come but let jesus be the root in your life and i believe if you're hearing me today jesus is the root of your life but maybe you have been deceived with other thoughts and other things and you're you've been troubled and tormented with wrong thoughts and even uh, unbiblical thoughts but today as you see what jesus has done for you on the cross understand this he has become a curse for you and so you need need not live in any curse you can live in freedom in jesus name you need not have any hereditary disease or disease upon your body jesus has redeemed you from the curse of the law and you belong to the father who said i will not put any sickness upon you for i am the god who heals you amen i am the god who heals you and that is restored in christ jesus he has taken your curse of even every disease in your life Amen. So receive the blessing of Abraham into your life. Lift your hand and say I receive the blessing of Abraham into my life. I receive the blessing of God into my life. I receive every blessing in Christ Jesus in my life. Amen. From every bondage, even some of your minds are very uh, very bogged down. it is it is tense it is not free but receive deliverance this morning from the cross of jesus this morning in the name of jesus freedom over your mind in jesus name freedom over your body in jesus name your life your body may be dry and feeling dead but jesus is the root in your body he is a root in your life and he'll produce his life again amen and receive that blessing of life from jesus today in jesus name amen Hallelujah. Say hallelujah. Say I receive every blessing. Amen. Praise God. This is Isaiah 53 verse 2. He grew up before him like a tender plant and as a root out of dry ground. When everything was dry, Jesus was the answer. When no matter what's happening in our life, Jesus is the answer amen hallelujah let's pray together church let's pray bowing down before the one who set us free